So how do we tackle atrial fibrillation? Actually, atrial fibrillation is tackled at many levels. First, we can decide whether you need rhythm control. Sometimes we can give you medication to maintain your rhythm. Or sometimes we can consider cardioversion. Cardioversion is a procedure where we shock your heart to normal rhythm under sedation. Although it sounds scary, but cardioversion is a relatively simple procedure which can be done as a day surgery. And once your heart is shocked to normal rhythm, we can continue you on medication that can maintain your rhythm. As I mentioned earlier, we can do operation to keep your heartbeat normal. That means we can treat atrial fibrillation source. So one of the procedure we call is uh, pulmonary vein isolation where uh, we do radiofrequency ablation to keep your heart in normal rhythm. We can also do something called a left atrial appendage closure. This can reduce the risk of stroke in future. Certain patients with atrial fibrillation may need pacemaker. Apart from rhythm control and operations, patients with atrial fibrillation also need blood thinners or medication to keep their heartbeat in control. So the blood thinners which we use nowadays are either warfarin or there are certain newer medication we have to prevent stroke associated with atrial fibrillation. And these medicines are very important to prevent stroke. So this is just an uh, animation of the procedure. You can see we go inside your heart through your vein under X-ray guidance. This is the heart animation again. From the left top chamber of your heart, right top chamber of your heart, we go to the left top chamber. We find the areas where the atrial fibrillation comes from. These are the small veins that causes disorganized or abnormal electric current in your heart. And we actually draw scars around these veins by using radio frequency energy that stops these veins from sending your heart into atrial fibrillation. And once we are done, we take out these catheters and uh, it, it can be done as a day surgery procedure where you come in, do the operation, can go home next day. And we use something called 3D mapping. 3D mapping is, is a, because your heart is actually a 3D structure. X-ray only gives a 2D image of your heart. So we use this technology where we can make a 3D map of your heart while doing the procedure. And we can very precisely localize where the atrial fibrillation comes from and uh, then do radio frequency ablation or scar up those areas which actually causes atrial fibrillation. So you can see that these catheters are just making a 3D model of your heart. Once the 3D model is there, this is this is the left top chamber of your heart. We can find out how the current runs, where these abnormal, where the abnormal rhythm comes from, and then we scar those areas by doing ablation, which is uh, done with these catheters introduced into your heart through the veins. Another rhythm problem that is quite common and uh, can occur in very young individuals as well is called supraventricular tachycardia. Supraventricular tachycardia is sudden onset, regular, sustained palpitation. So compared to atrial fibrillation, here your heartbeat is very regular. So if we sometimes we tell the patient he can tap his heartbeat, he can tell you that his heartbeat is very regular during these symptoms. The heartbeat can go up to 150 to 200 beats per minute or sometimes can be even higher. Young patient with rapid palpitation, particularly young women, sometimes may be misdiagnosed as panic attacks and you know, may, they may see many doctors before they come to know that they have SVT. Uh, anxiety and distress sometimes that occurs after episode of SVT uh, can lead to this conclusion that they may have uh, anxiety rather than palpitation. So uh, it is very important to take a very good history to find out whether these symptoms are a result of SVT or the fast heartbeat is the result of anxiety. So this is just another animation of uh, supraventricular tachycardia. You can see your heartbeat is running like a, a car in a racing track. It is very fast. And instead of coming from the normal 
pacemaker of your heart, your heartbeat is actually running here like a racing track. And your heartbeat can go up to 180, 200, but it is very regular compared to atrial fibrillation. Supraventricular tachycardia also can be effectively treated with uh, a procedure. So we call it electrophysiology study and radiofrequency ablation. It is minimally invasive procedure where we go into your heart, we find that short circuit or extra wire that causes this problem and we scar it up by heating up the tissue. Sometimes if the patient is not keen for doing procedures or he's worried about doing operations, actually this problem can be managed with medication, but the efficacy of medication in controlling this is, uh, is poor. So medicine only helps about 40 to 50% of the time compared to radiofrequency ablation or procedure, which can potentially cure this problem in more than 95% of the patients.